It would be highly more effective, though, if people in Mexico and Central America, South America, solved their problems domestically. That would take away the whole credible fear uh, claims that, that that end up showing at our border. Correct. Uh, so, so it seems like there's a unanimous consent there by our by our witnesses. And I just wonder, you know, in, in El Salvador, probably not something that would go over well with our Bill of Rights in America, but it seems to be pretty effective. It looks pretty peaceful and safe for people that aren't aren't causing harm to their neighbors. Does anyone feel like uh, what's going on in El Salvador has been effective? In the in the short term, yes. Uh, ask in five years. I do worry about a, a permanent state of emergency and what that does and when there's no checks and balances on presidential power. Okay. I, I think what President Bukele has done in El Salvador is a miracle. And you should, uh, in every Western country across the world, we should target criminals and gangs and cartels, round them up and detain them and incarcerate them for as long as we can. I think the um, what's also very illustrative uh, about El Salvador is about a third of their GDP comes from remittances yeah. here in the United States. And so you've, we've got to deal with this issue. I, I, I certainly agree with what he's doing regarding criminals, uh, but we've got to provide other incentives for these countries to retain their talent, to retain their... Yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry, my time's running out. And look, I, I, I think that's right. And I think, look, I'm encouraged by developments in Ecuador and Argentina. And uh, we've got a lot of promise in this Western Hemisphere as we close in on the 100th anniversary of the Monroe Doctrine. I hope we protect our own backyard.